Hello and welcome to COP4708 Applied Database One. I'm your host, Dr. Ron Eglin. This is Module 10. We're going to talk about DML, SQL DML, Data Manipulation Language. Previously, we've talked about SQL DDL, Data Definition Language, where we were able to create tables and rows and columns and constraints and keys, but none of those manipulate data. They all manipulate the format that the data can be in. Well, now we're going to actually start working with data. So let's learn DML. A SQL, it's still SQL, it's just SQL is really divided into two pieces, DDL and DML. So now we're doing DML, data manipulation. So really in DML, there's four primary statements that you have, that you work with. Select, insert, update, and delete because those are the four things that you're gonna do with data. You're gonna select, basically that's a query. You're gonna insert, that's putting data into, the, into a table, and that's new rows. Update, changing values, and delete, getting rid of rows. That's it, that's the biggies. Of course, there's a lot more to it. So, the basic syntax of a SQL select, which is the one that you're gonna use a lot. Okay, it's select, okay, then the names of the columns, or star, from the tables, there can be more than one table here where specific conditions are met, and those conditions are basically the conditions of the query. That is the query. So, let's start off with an example. For those of you guys that are using Oracle Live SQL, which is my class, um, you're going to be able to go to your SQL worksheet, and um, you should have some databases and tables in there that you've created as part of your homework, so you can now start issuing queries. So let's say we want to get the name and the nationality from the artist table, it's simple. Select the name and na the common nationality from artist and voila, you'll do it and you'll get the results. They'll pop down at the bottom. And it has the ability to download this as a CSV and pop it so you can bring it into Excel or some other way, but that's, um, that's part of the Oracle um, Live SQL features. And there you go, it's, really not too hard but of course you've got lots of things that you can do with this you can um, you can say okay I want the columns in different orders okay nationality or name name nationality you can change the way that it shows up now if you use select star it's going to be in the order of the actual columns in the table but when you're doing an actual select statement you can do this you can specify the columns in any order. You can also specify them with different names. That would be select nationality as, and then something, comma, name as something, and that would actually, the, the name at the top of the, the output would not be the name of the actual column, it'd be whatever the as was. Distinct. So in the case of distinct, it gives you, in this case, distinct nationality name, it looks, to make sure that these are, well, distinct, the words, that uh, they're not repeated. Okay, well, that's pretty straightforward. What you'll use more than anything, good old select star. You're going to use select star a lot. When you're creating reports or creating views that have specific fields that have to be underneath specific names, then that select statement will likely have the, the uh, column names and, it, and what you want those column names to appear as. That's that good old as. But most of the time you're just going to quickly go, oh, I need to see everything select star from. Sometimes with a where clause, um, which we're going to be putting in also. So a good example of select star is just simply select star from artist, execute, and there they are all the, all the rows of the artist table. Of course, you may want to order it by different Row, uh, different row values. You've got that. So by the, you know, by the different columns, you want, to select, you want to order the rows by the column. Okay. Well, that's what order by does. Okay. That's really straightforward. Or, and you can also say you want it to be either in descending or ascending, ascending order because you're, you're alphabetizing it and you can tell it how you want to do it. So there's the DESC and the AESC. Um, again, none of this is really hard. Select star from, select star all tables from work, the work table, order by this um, column, column and 
descending order and by this column artist ID in ascending order. Well, you've also now got to look with, well, we've got this where clause, we can do more with it. Um, well, well, we haven't actually, we're introducing the where clause, ha ha ha. So here's this where clause, okay? So select star from orc where, okay, now in this case, take one of the columns and set it equal to a value, okay? In this case, we use the and artist ID equals four, but artist ID four did not have the title Nightbird, so you'll get no data found. If you change the value to, or, or actually remove the end, you'll get the column that's returned. Um, Nightbird was artist, I, artist ID of the artist for Nightbird was three. You can also do an or, and again, this works just like good old and an or, it's not anything tricky. Um, and you're gonna get both the Nightbird and artist four. Also, what else? You've got a nice one for, this one's very handy by the way. Select star from artist nationality in, and then you can give a list of nationalities, but you can also embed another SQL statement inside the in, which is pretty impressive that you've got this. So um, you'll, you'll do that later. Right now, let's just say, hey, if you want to actually have a where clause where you've got multiple values, you could say select star from ours for nationality is equal to German or nationality equals French, which would be the same thing as saying select star from artist, uh, artist where nationality is in German French. It gives you, gives you that option a little bit cleaner. You can also do, um, you can do in, but you can also do not in. And by the way, this should be not in. There you go. I had to fix that one. There, there it is. And, uh, and it will show the ones that are not German and not French. All right. What else can we do? Well, we can do ranges. That's pretty nice. Select star from artist where birth date is between 1860 and 1870. It will understand that and it will give you all the ones with birth dates between 1860 and 1870. Yes. Okay. Um, also, you can do it with math expressions, which is also kind of nice. Select star from ours for birth date is greater than 1860 and less than 18, less than or equal to 1870. Um, yes, it does understand a lot of math um, expressions. We are gonna, you're gonna also get to do some of these. It's really more of like when you play with this, you get to kind of see its capability. But you'll be impressed by how much that you can actually do with um, with your just simple select statements. Um, now, we've also got things like wild cards. Select star from artist where, oops, select star from, it's not from our, from artist, whoops, not in, that's a space, where name like Henry Percent, and Percent is a wild card. You are going to have everything that begins with Hen, on, Henri, um, so this is Matisse, we have to say it in French. Anyway, um, and it will match the wild card. Um, you've got wild cards that can be on both sides, um, like percent style percent. Okay. That's, you know, pretty straightforward. I mean, but, but it's nice to see that you've got that wild card capability on both. You've also got that capability of wild card spaces. So select star from artist where deceased date is like percent, so that means you can have anything before the, the, the first part, 19 underscore underscore, and um, it's going to get, it's going to pattern match that 19, and it's going to give you everything that begins with the 19. Um, where clauses, okay, so um, essentially, I think you've pretty much got the idea of how to do the wild cards they're not that tricky um again just another example of wild carding here just remember that percent says hey i don't care what's before the percent at the end i don't care what's after that underscore gives you something can go into that space it does make the wild carding pretty easy 
Okay, you also need to be able to put data into. Um, back in an old lecture, we showed you how to, a quick and dirty way to put um, the, to insert multiple rows at one time with one statement, which is, this is, this is your syntax. Essentially insert into table name, then you put the, the list of all the rows that you want to insert into. Remember that in this case, you need to put all of the rows um, that are not null because you they're required values. And then with names as, and now you just put, there's the values that you're going to put in. And notice I got that from dual union all, from dual union all, from dual union all, from dual, and then select star from names at the bottom. It, that's a um, that's a shortcut for having to do a whole bunch of insert into insert into insert into insert into insert into, which by the way would also work. Just issuing multiple insert into's over and over again will work just fine. Where you do one row at a time, and you know we we actually have done, done this one also, but now realize that you've got some foreign keys here with work ID, customer ID, which are foreign ID keys. So the values that go with those have to match values that are at, in the tables that these are foreign keys for. So the work table and the customer table will actually have to have those um, inserted values exist in a row in those tables. So, um, okay, good to know. Um, what else can you do? Well, we've got aggregation functions, kind of nice. Select sum, um, sales prices, total sales from trans. Okay, so now you see that as, um, by the way, you can do, hang on, I'm going to make a little change to this to show you that you can do this. Oop, let's put this as a quote, quote. And now I can actually have it output as total sales with total space sales as the actual name. Okay, I'm going to take that out because my example down below does not have that. So I want it to match the actual executed one that we played with. Um, but what it did is it summed up all the sales prices of all the, the um, of all the total sales in the trans table. What other ones have we got? We've got average, min, max, um, count let's do count okay come down here um select count it'll give you the number of rows that actually return on that specific condition so you've got a lot of capability we've also got the ability whoops um oh in this case we've also got an one here where we we do a count of distinct nationality which actually changes a little bit um we're looking for so essentially you had four rows but one of the rows had the same nationality so um, I can't remember if it was two. It was two. Two of the rows of the artists in the um, in that table had the same nationality. So in this case, when you did the distinct, it'll just tell you how many distinct nationalities you have there. This one does come in really handy, by the way. So just kind of remember that one when you want to know. Okay, well, how many different values do I actually have for the values in this row? How many different names do the people have? Those those are those are handy to know. Okay. Um, what else can we do? Well, this isn't select star. This is select quantity times price as, in this case, EP. Okay, that's just the, um, the output column that you're going to have for that. But it will actually do the math, which is kind of nice. Um, here we go. I wanted to show you, remember, I said that you could embed a select statement well, here's an embedded select statement. Select sum, sales price is total per state, from trans, where customer ID in. Now, the customer ID is gonna, you're gonna need to actually get the select statement to return customer IDs because you're looking to see if the customer ID is in something. So the embedded SQL statement, which is a subquery, is select customer ID from customer where state equals in this case, WA. So basically, it's going to give you the sales for the state of Washington. Okay, now, now, start seeing the real power of what you've got here. 
if I wanted to see all the states, not just see what's where state equals WA, what could I do? Well, if I took that where clause state equals Washington off, hmm, that's going to give you all the customers. So it'd be basically the same as just issuing the query without this select statement, without that where clause on the original query. But what if I actually wanted to see it with by state? So I have state and number. Hmm. That's one that you're going to get to think about probably in the discussions. Okay. Yes, it's doable. It's not really hard, but I want it to make sense. And what I mean by making sense is that you didn't have to start looking up how to do a bunch of queries that you're like, well, wait, if I really want to see this, what do I need to put in the query to see it in a certain way? Kind of give you a hint that if you order by, well, you can get ordered by a value, which could be, oh, let's just say states. Not going to give you the answer to this. You're going to give me the answer to this as you start doing a little bit of research and start looking at all the things that you can do with queries. There's a lot more. I have, if you take COP4709, we get into advanced queries and you'll find that it is absolutely amazing how you can parse data with SQL. Anyway, let's move onward. Um, joining. Here it is. This is the biggie. I've got one example here, but this is a big deal. In this case, we're, we're selecting the last name and sales price from two tables, customer and trans. Why? Because one of the values is in one table. One of the values that you want to get output is in another table. So you got to select it from both tables. But wait, how, how can this possibly work? You're doing a select with two tables. Do you have two conditions? This also should help you think a little bit about that last question that I asked you in the, in the I don't, how do you do this? Well, no. Trans.customerID is a foreign key to customer.customerID. So basically you're saying, we're gonna get from table, the, the last name from the table customers, but we're going to filter on the customers um, and get the transactions where, that that customer made by joining the tables on the field customer ID. So customer.customer ID equals trans.customer ID. And in this case, um, we did do an order by sales per customer and descending order because we'd actually like to see them in a specific order. Okay, nice. Now, that was doing joins. You're going to do a lot more with joins. We're going to talk about joins later, a lot more. Some other DDLs, adding columns. Here we go. You can add columns to a table. And I don't know why Artsit keeps showing up here, but it's artist. Dropping columns. Getting rid of the tables altogether, be very careful when doing this. Dropping the, the table completely. Sometimes it won't work because if there's foreign key constraints pointing to a specific table, um, it's not going to let you drop it until you remove those. Now, those, by the way, were DDLs. I'm like, well, okay, those babies made it in there somehow. Now, this is um, update. Update is also, it, this should actually make sense. I want to update the artist table. I want to change the nationality of one of my artists to Canadian. And the artist ID is five. How would I do that? Update artist, set column equal to the value I want for it, where an artist ID or where, where I identify the row where I want to do it. If I left off that where clause, Everybody just became Canadian, A. Eh? So um, Bob and Doug would be proud. Okay, but <laughs> be careful. 
because once you said all those nationalities the canadian it's really hard to go back and figure out what they were originally you have to go send them all back one at a time to the to what they were so again uh, and this is a common mistake made by people when they're dealing with databases update artists at nationality to canadian indian i made the person oh no now everybody's canadian okay be careful there uh, same thing where uh, delete. Delete from artist where artist ID equals 5. Well, guess what happens if you leave that artist ID equals 5 off? <laughs> Everybody is gone. You just deleted them all. Yeah. Okay. Again, that one you definitely don't want to mess up. Okay. But I can tell you, it's just as dangerous to mess up, mess up on the update. Get your where clauses correct. All right, that's it for today. I'm going to stop here. Um, I'm going to do a lot more with joins. If this seems like it's easy, there's a reason it is easy. That was the whole point behind SQL, to not make things cryptic and difficult to do to make it easy. But realize, in a declarative language, you are given a lot of power with a few keystrokes. You can delete all the artists by saying delete from artist. Well, potentially you might not be able to delete all artists. It'd be also, remember that thing I said about foreign key pointing to a primary key? Well, guess what? If it that's the case, then it you might be saved by the error saying, uh, this violates foreign key constraints. Hey, sometimes it might be a good thing. Anyway, that's it for database today. And um, I'm gonna actually have, have a lot of fun playing with um, this. Um, that's it. On out for me.